Healthcare here in the U.S. is a total scam. I'm just going to say it. Newsflash, friends. People in America are traveling to other countries to get access to care. My wife, uh, we just had our baby, and she had to take ibuprofen and uh, Tylenol. One 800-milligram tablet was $45 per dose. That is insane. We would always have to fight the insurance companies getting something a patient required. We're talking about having to do extra work just to get a diabetic the insulin they need. We are still shocked by how much better and cheaper it is in Ecuador and so many other countries. Hi guys, I'm Shelby if you're new here and this is my commentary series where we just real talk about just the modern scams of life and what you can do about it. I don't like to just complain, I like to give you tips at the end so stay tuned. And today's topic is healthcare. Both health insurance and hospital systems are a scam. I've had my own experiences with it and there's also a million studies on this. Let's get into it. Healthcare in the US is very expensive and it's important that we talk about this because we've normalized it when this is pretty much the only place in the world that this happens. A lot of people talk about the US healthcare system like there's nothing we can do about it but we just need to remember that this is not the case in other countries. This is very weird. This is not normal and we shouldn't have to put up with it frankly. There are stats to back this up. In the US healthcare on average costs double what it would anywhere else. So take a look at this. You can see here that per capita healthcare spending is over twice the average of other wealthy countries. We're even more expensive than Switzerland, the most expensive country in the world. <laughs> the average is about $6,400 and the average in the US is $12,000. Now I know a lot of people like to argue that it's because people in the US aren't as healthy and it is true that there is a lot of heart disease in the US. There are a lot of dietary and lifestyle factors that can cause more health issues, but what we've found through different studies is it is the procedures themselves that are twice as expensive. These same exact procedures are pretty much always more expensive in the United States. Take a look at this graph. This is the cost of an angioplasty. In the US, it's $32,000, but in the UK, it's only 11,000. Virtually every country is less than half the cost of what it is in the US. And this is just one procedure. We see this across the board for almost everything. And it's not just the medical procedures, it's also the medications. In 2018, the cost of insulin was like quadruple anywhere else in the world. It was $99 in the US. Meanwhile, in Mexico, it was only $16. I remember seeing on the news, a lot of people would just go to Mexico to get insulin. It's the same cost for the exact same thing. I should not have to cross a border to buy my insulin. I should not have to buy my insulin in the parking lot off a stranger as if it were a drug deal. None of us should fear death from a perfectly manageable disease. That is just... Now in 2024, they did cap the cost at $35, which is good because if you are diabetic, you need insulin. You absolutely need it. I just think that's disgusting that people are profiting that much off of it. It's just it's gross. Again, this is just one instance. There's a lot of medications and basically every procedure is more expensive here in the US. And a report also found that although we spend a lot of money, we actually get worse outcomes. You'd think we'd be getting top-notch treatment. Apparently, we're not. I do feel like in general, healthcare is good if you're going to a hospital, but there is still a lot of medical error. I think in particular, we see the infant mortality rate and with things related to, to giving birth um, seem very dangerous, where other countries take a different approach that is oftentimes safer. It's so jarring to see on TikTok somebody that has to go to the hospital and when they're traveling in Europe and it's way cheaper than in the US. Some people are even traveling abroad specifically for medical treatments. Just take a look here. Today you're using the French healthcare system to fix Alan's knee, get an MRI scan. Because the American system is just far too expensive. 2,500 versus 250. Yeah, we have insurance. In the US, no insurance here. Much cheaper than the US. Let's see how it goes. I've just paid 25 euros to go into this French nonprofit doctor's appointment. I got a prescription for an MRI, a referral to an orthopedic surgeon, and this, like some prescriptions for some pain gel and pain medication. That's a lot more than I walked away with from my $250 appointment with an orthopedic doctor in the US with insurance. Um, a referral to physical therapy that never actually called, and then six follow up calls, not returning my phone calls. Oh, yes.
There's a creator that I follow on TikTok who's from the US and now lives in France, and it only cost her 25 euro to go to the ER. 19 euros and 61 cents for the emergency room. And this will be reimbursed. So I'm going to pay them, but then Security Sociale is going to pay me back. You know, a lot of places in the world, healthcare is not an issue. It's not something people really worry about the way that we do here in the US. Meanwhile, in the US, people go bankrupt from healthcare costs. A lot of people don't realize just how scammy the whole system is because of the way it's set up that your job pays for your health insurance. However, this is an issue because we're more and more moving towards people working for themselves. The gig economy is huge now and you have more upside if you work for yourself, but you don't have a lot of negotiation power when it comes to your healthcare costs. Healthcare being provided by your job goes way back to the 40s when people worked in factories that were dangerous and so they had to provide healthcare because crazy stuff was happening. A lot of people are afraid to leave their jobs because it provides them health care even though they might make like 50,000 more working for themselves it ties people to jobs that sometimes don't pay them enough because i work for myself i get so much more mad about health care because all of the cost burden is on me but it's genius that it's set up this way because the majority of people work for companies and so they aren't that concerned about it because it might not affect them unless they lose their job or they decide to work for themselves but many people aren't really thinking about that. If everyone in the US had to purchase their own healthcare the way that you know myself and a lot of people that work for ourselves do, I think there would be a huge uproar <laughs> because, because I pay a lot for insurance that covers pretty much nothing. One pro about healthcare in the US is that at least you can see a doctor fairly quickly or, or can you? Because this is an argument that people make and it is an issue in some countries that have a single payer healthcare system that it can take a very long time to see a doctor. You know, it seems like in the US we can see a doctor a lot faster, but in reality, that's not always totally true. What I found from my research is that this is mostly a Canada problem. This is the country with the longest healthcare waiting time, but take a look at number two, the US. It's the US guys. Turns out places like the Netherlands, Germany, France, you don't have to wait as long in the US. That's crazy. I have totally seen this to be true. I recently saw a doctor who referred me to a specialist and they told me, oh, this time of year, it's actually really hard to see a specialist. You should probably make an appointment soon because you're probably gonna have to wait for six months to see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. It's possible it wouldn't take me as long in LA, but I will say I actually have had a lot of sinus issues in my life. I regularly had to go see an ENT for a while and I could never get an appointment faster than six weeks. I was usually waiting, you know, two months for an appointment. In the US, you might be able to get to the ER pretty quickly. You can go to a basic urgent care, but if you have a problem that requires a specialist, it can actually take kind of a long time. You're still gonna be waiting a long time in a lot of cases and you're gonna get ripped off. So at least in Canada, it's free. They're waiting a little longer than we are, but it's free. I think it is largely a myth or just over-dramatized that other countries are waiting waiting a really long time for procedures. Maybe in Canada they are. I got coffee with a British YouTuber who was here recently and she told me that it actually doesn't take that long to wait to go to the doctor there. To see a primary care doctor in the US, you do have to wait three to four days. You usually can't go the same day unless it's an urgent care facility, not to be confused with the emergency room. The urgent care is not the emergency room. So why is it so expensive? This is something I've really grappled with. It doesn't make sense because other countries it's not. So why, why is it here? There are several reasons, but to sum it up, it's because it is a for-profit system. And another big reason is because it isn't a single payer system. Hospitals have much more advantage in setting the prices and we as consumers have less negotiation power. Vox made a really great video about how in other countries, when it is a single payer system, I know this is a controversial type of system, whether you like it or not, it does lower the cost on average for procedures because the government says, hey, this is how much we're willing to pay if you don't abide by that, then you're you're just not going to get paid more. Because it is a private healthcare system and there's many different payers, there's probably hundreds of different insurance companies that negotiate their rates with different hospitals. And then there's the government subsidized healthcare, which is Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid are the only ones that really get 
the most affordable rate. In this Vox video, they basically say it's because it's such a large chunk of the population, because they all band together in that way, they have more negotiation power. They're able to get better rates. A lot of hospitals are for profit. There are some that are not for profit and a lot of health insurance companies claim they're not for profit, but we'll get into that because I don't really buy it personally. Essentially, the hospitals in the US have more of an advantage and more of a negotiation power because we're a private healthcare system, then we can see in a single healthcare system, they can't they can't charge these crazy prices. Another reason it's expensive is there are a lot of bullshit administrative costs when it comes to both hospitals and health insurance companies. While a lot of hospitals and insurance companies say they're not for profit, there are things that they count as expenses that are just kind of outlandish. Take a look at any major hospital system. The CEO is a lot of times making $15 million a year. There's dozens of people on the payroll making one to $5 million a year. Kaiser Permanente specifically, we see this, but Kaiser Permanente is just one hospital system. There's a bunch of hospital systems just like this. So while they technically might be a not-for-profit company, meaning they're not trying to make a profit, it's because their payroll expense is gigantic. And because every healthcare system is like this and there's no cap on it, they all sort of have to pay this much now in order to retain the, the leadership that they need. Put me in charge. I'll do it for 500k a year. And now now there's this standard they all expect to be paid 15 million a year if they don't get that they'll just go to another hospital system this is the same thing with insurance companies if you take a look at blue shield look at how much they're paying people this is just for Blue Shield of California. The CEO makes $6 million and a large part of their executive team is making one to three million a year. And keep in mind, there's a Blue Shield in pretty much every state in America. That's 50 CEOs just for this one insurance company, likely making over a million dollars a year. And the larger national ones, of course, make even more. Cigna's CEO made $20 million. Same thing with United Health Group's CEO. And of course, the whole team making like over five mil a year. And it wasn't always this way, actually. My mom actually worked at a hospital in the 90s. She did medical billing. When she worked at this hospital, it was in Washington state and it was owned by nuns. A lot of hospitals actually have a religious history. The history of healthcare in the US, a lot of it, when it dates back to like Catholicism, actually, if you really look into it, it's kind of interesting, which is good and bad. Back then, you know, nuns actually did provide more charity care. They didn't nickel and dime people as much, my mom said. Well, However, you know, they, they wouldn't even give birth control. They're definitely not going to do abortions, probably even for ectopic pregnancies. Like they weren't perfect. Okay. But they truly were a nonprofit. Like truly. I feel like the nonprofits today are kind of BS. They're not. They are making a profit. They're just in the numbers making it look like they're not. My mom said that when she worked at this hospital, when the nuns worked there, they were able to give charity care a lot more freely. Prices of things were lower. Eventually, the nuns were dying out and they had to sell it to a hospital group that was buying up a lot of hospitals in the area. When this happened, my mom said they hired all these BS administrative people who had much higher salaries and they pushed for the medical billers to bill for every little thing. That's when we started seeing people get billed $100 for a Tylenol. It's when these bigger hospital groups got involved and started buying them out. So this was St. Francis in Federal Way, Washington. That's where my mom worked. If you look into the history of it, it was originally owned by nuns. Now it's owned by Chai Franciscan Healthcare, which is now a pretty big healthcare system in Washington state. This is something I think a lot of people don't know about has happened with a lot of hospital systems because how would they know? If my mom didn't work in medical billing in the 90s, I would not have known that. She has like a firsthand account of it that I think is super interesting. There's a lot of administrative bloat when it comes to hospitals. And part of the reason for this administrative cost is the way that our health insurance works. Dr. Mike has a really good TikTok on this. Just take a look. Let's mm -hmm. say I'm following a patient's tumor size. We need an MRI to see how the tumor is behaving. The insurance company will deny it. I will call them. I will say the patient needs, why? Because of this. Did you get a CAT scan first? No, they don't need a CAT scan. They need an MRI. No, they do. And I have to argue for 45 minutes. Yeah. Guess what I don't get paid for as a doctor? Well, for me, I'm a weird scenario, Time. but everyone else. Time. If you're a lawyer, yes. are you doing anything for 45 minutes no, without getting compensated? I don't find that doctors will call and argue. Most doctors will try and then we fail. So then we start trying to hire administrators to do it for us. And that is why healthcare costs have ballooned in this country. I see. Our healthcare costs have double, tripled. Doctors should be making way more money. They're not. Doctors themselves sometimes have to waste time justifying why they have to do a procedure. This back and forth is 
a, a terrible use of a doctor's time. A lot of times, a private practice is gonna have to hire a full-time medical billing staff to make sense of this confusing, ridiculous healthcare system. That's a huge added cost that just gets passed on to us patients. There's so much time wasted just negotiating with insurance. And this is a big issue. The Vox video really explains. And I know a lot of people don't like the government running things because in many, a lot of people don't like the government running things or getting involved because a lot of times they're not very efficient. Although recently I went to the DMV and they have it together. It was pretty efficient. The USPS, like there are some government run things that are, are pretty good, I would say actually. But then there's like the IRS, like clearly is not. A lot of times the government becomes bureaucratic and slow. When it's left to private companies and consumers have a choice, prices go down. If you're shopping for a TV, you don't really need it. You have time to price shop. You're gonna get the best price of it because there's 10 different companies making TVs. If the government was the only one making TVs, it probably would be bad. But with healthcare, it's very different because you can't really price shop. A lot of times, if you're in an emergency, you have to go to the ER. You're at the mercy of whatever they charge you. Even when it's not an emergency, the prices aren't really transparent. They passed an act that made hospitals list their prices, but even when you look at it, they're still all over the map. It'll still be this huge range of thousands of dollars that something could cost. It's not really transparent. So every hospital has to legally have their charges now on their website, but you can see for a sleep study, it has this minimum and maximum number that is very different, 360 to $2,400, like what? But they do at least show you what each insurance is going to charge you. So it's kind of helpful, but the numbers are still kind of all all over the map. It's really hard to get a cost estimate. If you call if you call a hospital to try and get an estimate, they'll pretty much tell you they can't do it. And even if they do, a lot of times it's still different when they bill you. Hospitals, they just have too much power in what they can charge and they do abuse that. So they charge just ridiculous amounts for things. And I saw this with my most recent medical bill. I recently had to go to urgent care for a sinus infection that just wouldn't go away. I have my own health insurance, but it is a catastrophic plan that I pay $350 a month for. So I try and not go very much. It was three months of getting sick, basically. So by the third time I was finally like, okay, I'll just go get a prescription. So I go to an urgent care, which is not the emergency room. Urgent care is basic care. A lot of the times it's not a doctor, it's a physician's assistant or maybe a nurse. They can write you prescriptions for basic things. It's usually not that expensive, but I made a big mistake, which we'll get into. I went to this urgent care appointment. I was there for 30 minutes. I did a COVID test, a strep test. I saw a doctor for maybe five minutes. You know, I was mostly just waiting for the test and had a nurse that checked my vitals and whatever. And then I got my bill. It was $474 for an appointment that actually wasn't even helpful. I, I still have the sinus issue. Like the prescription helped for like a week and then it just came back. So I made a big mistake. I went to an urgent care that was within a big hospital system. So they charged me for an outpatient visit, not an urgent care. I was shook by this because I've gone to urgent care for the exact same thing so many times in my life. This is not a new issue for me. I've never had to pay more than $150. Even one time I went without insurance and they, that was it, 150 bucks. So so this time I was like, excuse me? You can see they charged me, first of all, for a 45 minute appointment, which it was not a 45 minute appointment. And you can see I was charged twice for the outpatient visit, once for the facility fee, and once for the actual care from the doctor. We can do the appointment in the parking lot then. I don't really care. So I've really been trying to fight this because my appointment actually wasn't 45 minutes. And secondly, this is above the average cost for these same procedures at other medical centers. So I just feel like it's crazy that they charge me this much. But basically, if you guys need to go to urgent care, just go to one of those little like city MD, those little pop-up urgent cares. Do not go to one that's within a hospital because they will rip you off. They code it differently if you go to one that's within a hospital. They code it for like a normal like primary care visit. Thing that I've heard these companies do is they price it higher to make it look like your insurance is actually doing something when it's not. So they charge me for $700 when the actual cost of this is probably like a hundred. 
somewhere around there. They billed me $50 for a strep A test when you can get a pack on Amazon for $115. That's only $2.30 per test. You know hospitals are always getting bulk pricing, so there's no way it actually costs $50. They tell me that my Blue Shield plan got me $200 off, but a lot of times I've heard that it doesn't really. Oh my gosh, I am a patient that just got my hospital bill and they charged me $50,000 to give birth to my own child. I am so lucky though because I have insurance and I only had to pay $6,000. And then like 50 of you tag me and you're like, oh my gosh, Christy, how can a normal delivery cost $50,000? It doesn't, it doesn't. It is a made up price. Usually it's called a charge master price and it's essentially just a negotiation starting point between your hospital and your insurance. Charge master prices are way inflated. They're usually 300 to 500% more than the actual fair market value of that service. Hospitals benefit from keeping this number as high as possible so that when insurance companies only reimburse a percentage of that number, the hospital can still make a profit. But before you think the insurance company is the hero here, insurance companies very much benefit from hospitals keeping these prices high as well. When a hospital bills you tens of thousand dollars for a service and then your insurance company comes back and says you only owe a few thousand dollars, it looks like your insurance company saves you a lot of money. That's good advertising. In addition, the more and more expensive that healthcare costs become, the more and more people there are that feel forced into buying insurance to avoid financial ruin. That's cornering a market. They just inflate the costs to make it look like your insurance is doing something when it's really not. There's no amount of gaslighting that could convince me that procedure that I had done was actually worth $700. Why are they charging me? They charged me $127 for a COVID test. Like, excuse me, I can go get one at the store for $5. And obviously hospitals are buying these in bulk. You can even get the antigen rapid test now for $1.75 per test. Yes, there are different types of COVID tests, but I'm not leaving the country. This is not life or death. I don't need the expensive COVID tests. I just don't. So I've actually been trying to fight this and get the cost lower. I've seen on TikTok, there is a former nurse who advocates for patients and she's been spilling a lot of tea on how to get your medical bill low. One thing that you can do is go to a website called fairconsumerhealth.org. I think that's what it is. I'll put it here. You can put in the code that they bill you for and see what the average cost is in your area. So I put in the code for the COVID test and we can see that they ended up billing me for the out of network uninsured price when this was in network. So you can see if they're charging you more than the average and you can try and say, hey, you're charging a lot more than other places. But I did try this, you guys, and it didn't work. They were like, those are our prices. It's like, oh, well, my appointment still wasn't 45 minutes. A lot of people are actually able to get their medical bill way lower this way because 80% of medical bills have errors. They'll charge you for something twice. But even if that's not the case, Sometimes you're able to negotiate a lower price. I have not been successful with it, but I do think this is just not a great system because who has the time for this? Fortunately, I'm able to make the time for this because I can call it research for this video and I can spend a few hours communicating with them. But most people don't have the time for this. A lot of people are at work all day and they come home. They, you know, we all have chores. We have errands. You might have kids. You, you know, we're all busy. A lot of people don't have time to argue back and forth with their insurance or with the hospital. And so they end up just paying it. And I've done it before. I've just paid it because it's not the best use of my time. And I think they know this. They know that people don't have have the time to deal with this and they'll just eventually pay it. One issue I don't see a lot of people talk about is it makes people not ever want to go to the doctor even when they should, which can actually make things worse. I have found with any medical issue, if you don't treat it early, it's usually just going to get worse. Like it will spread to other areas. Like if you have foot pain, it will cause knee pain. Some things go away on their own, but a lot of things don't. A lot of us are just afraid to even go to preventative appointments because we're gonna get charged a ridiculous amount. I hate to admit this and I know it's not a good thing, but I try and avoid going to the doctor, even when I should. I know I should go see a specialist for a sinus infection, but I also know it's probably gonna be $2,000 or more and it probably won't even help that much. So I've just been putting it off, which I know is bad. I know consciously I shouldn't do that, but I also know I'm not the only one who does this. Another thing I want to touch on is not only is this a scam to patients, but it's also a scam to providers. A lot of doctors and nurses are very overworked. Insurance companies will only let them see a patient for five minutes. Insurance companies will require doctors to see a certain number of patients every day. And so that's part of the reason why we're not even getting that good of care. Everything's very rushed. It causes doctors to burn out. They don't enjoy their job as much. Same thing with nurses. A 
lot of them are overworked. A lot of nurses are quitting. In fact, I actually met one of my subscribers a couple years ago. She was a travel nurse and she quit to become a wedding photographer. You know, she's not the only one. A lot of nurses are quitting. So all in all, yeah, the whole system is a scam, but I hate to feel powerless in it. There is still things that we can do that I wanna share with you guys. These are some things that we should all know about. The first thing, if you have a non-urgent medical issue, actually check the reviews of hospitals before you go. I wish I would have done this before I went to urgent care at that big hospital system because I went to their Yelp to leave a bad review and I found a lot of people ran into the same issue. The hospital had horrible reviews. It had like two something stars. I actually could have avoided this whole thing if I had just researched a little bit before I had gone. Could have gone to a normal urgent care that would charge me a normal price. I thought it was a fine one to go to because my parents recommended it. But then later my mom told me she got charged like $2,000 for blood work. So I feel like she just didn't realize she was getting scammed too. So research, check the Yelp reviews. Every hospital actually has to list their prices on their website. Again, it's very vague. It'll be a range of thousands of dollars. It still might help you choose if you have to get a surgery somewhere. Another thing you could do, you could go overseas. Travel tourism is not just for cosmetic procedures. People are actually doing it for all kinds of stuff. A lot of times it is cheaper to go to a different country. I don't know how I feel about this though, because we don't want to overwhelm other countries' systems just because ours is a scam, but it is something that people do. Another thing I'm going to start doing is documenting everything. The next time I go to a doctor, I'm going to say, hey, I'm filming this. I'm filming this whole appointment for my records. I'm gonna try and do that the next time I have an appointment because one, you'll have proof of everything they did. So if they bill you for something extra, you can show that that, that didn't actually happen. And you'll also have proof of how long the appointment is. So if they're trying to bill you for a longer appointment like they are for me, you can show how long they were actually with you. It also could be helpful for in the future if you forgot something your doctor said, you know, it could be helpful to have that. It might be that some doctors say you can't film it. I'm not really sure, but I've filmed things before. It's never been a problem, but you do have to tell them that you're filming. It's another thing that you can do. Follow this girl on TikTok. This is the former nurse that's spilling the tea on how to get your medical bill lower. If you ever do get a medical bill that's really high, go through the steps that she's talking about. She's really brought to light the fact that you can apply for charity care. If you make under a certain amount, they won't tell you this, but if you know about it and you press to get it, they can waive the whole cost of certain procedures. There's also AI services. One is called Good Bill. They can negotiate your medical bill for you. They just don't have every healthcare system yet. That's why I'm not using this one yet. They haven't input the hospital that I went to. Another thing to know, if you go to a private practice, they're negotiable. A lot of specialists are private practice and they are negotiable. They're not owned by a big healthcare system telling them what to charge. So it's a lot easier to to negotiate, especially if you just pay in cash and they don't have to deal with your insurance, it'll be cheaper. I got my jaw surgery way cheaper this way. I actually knew this girl in LA who worked for a very famous doctor. A lot of celebrities go to this doctor. I won't say what, it's not a cosmetic thing. Let's just say they usually go to this doctor for around nine months. She told me that they charge a kind of all-inclusive price for the nine months for the, the main procedure that happens at the end. It's this one set price. And then she told me when people couldn't afford it, they would just instantly cut the price in half and offer that. It happens a lot. If you're going to a private practice, like you can try and you can try and negotiate. Another one to know about is cost plus drugs. This is Mark Cuban's website where he sells prescriptions, um, different medications for way lower than the usual price. So if you have an ongoing prescription, see if you can get it here for cheaper. They've got hundreds. They even have different cancer drugs. I mean, look at these price differences. You could save thousands of dollars using this. We started a company called costplusdrugs.com. It'll show you not only what we sell it for, it'll show you our cost. And like we'll, actual cost? Our actual cost, what we really pay for it. We mark it up 15%, that's it. We have a $3 pharmacy fee and $5 for shipping. That's it. Shout out to Mark Cuban. A billionaire doing something good. We love to see it. And the last thing that we can do is consider voting for people who will fix the healthcare system. I need to do more research in this. Like, are we gonna move to a single healthcare system in our lifetime? Maybe, it's that's a really tough ask. Who knows, I don't know. But there are some politicians that are working to cap some of the more ridiculous things that are happening in the healthcare industry. I'm not saying who to vote for for president because I don't think either of the candidates are really gonna work towards 
a better healthcare system, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but there are still some politicians who are working to prevent parts of the health industry's scams. Personally, that is a big deal to me. This is something that I prioritize my vote going towards. So that is a bit about why the US healthcare system is a scam. It really is so complicated though. I'm sure that there's so much more to it. I would love for you guys to comment down below your experiences with the US healthcare system. If you know any way to get it cheaper, if you have experience going abroad for healthcare services, if you have tips for hacking this stupid system, let us know, comment down below. If you were able to fight a medical bill successfully, I need the tips because I'm currently still trying to do it and it's not going well, you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.